Okay, so get this. For today's deep dive, we're looking at a game where you play as a troll. Who gives superpowers to humans? And wait for it. Your goal is to get a key and open a door. Seriously, that's it. Oh, it gets weirder. The NPCs, you know the characters you meet in the game? They actually have AI generated dialogue. Whoa, now that's a whole other level. We have to unpack that. Right. And this was part of Game Dev JS Jam 2024, which as you know, always has some really interesting submissions. But what I really want to get into is how this even works, because the developer used a wild combination of tools to make this happen. Yeah, looking at the tech stack here, they use Phaser as the game engine, which is pretty standard, but then it gets interesting. A sprite for graphics. And a sprite, isn't that for pixel art? Exactly, and that makes total sense when you see the game. So it's got that retro look. Yeah, a really charming pixel art style, like something straight out of the 80s. I can already tell where this is going. They probably use beatbox for the music. Crowd. I got it. Yeah. That classic 8-bit chiptune sound, it all adds to the overall retro vibe. Okay, so we've got pixel art graphics and chiptune music. What else did they throw in? Well, for sound effects, they use something called ZZFX. I'd never heard of it before, to be honest. Me neither. Was well, it some kind of like sound effect library? Kind of, but not really. It actually lets you code sound effects directly, which is pretty neat. Wow, the developer really got their hands dirty with this one. But what really caught my eye was how they did the voice acting. Speech Synthesis Voice API and VoiceChanger.io that's pretty ingenious. Right. Talk about working smarter, not harder. <laughs> they took a free text-to-speech engine and then ran it through a voice changer. So budget-friendly and incredibly creative. It really shows you don't need a ton of fancy tools to make something cool. So let's get into the gameplay a bit. You're this troll, and your goal is to open a door. But you can't touch the humans. Aha, and that's where the superpowers come in. Some of these are hilarious. I bet you've got your typical super jump, levitation, those kinds of things. Yeah. But then it gets weird. Weird doesn't even cover it. We're talking powers like no shit and I'm blue. Hold on, no shit. What does that even mean in this context? And I'm blue. Does that turn the humans blue? You'll have to play to find out. But yeah, it's as ridiculous as it sounds. Oh, and then there's Burberry Man. Burberry Man. Okay, now I have to know. Let's just say it involves a lack of clothing and leave it at that. Oh my God. Out of all of these powers, though, the one that really changes the game is Switcheroo. Switcheroo? What's that one do? Make the humans switch clothes. Even better. Yeah. You get to swap places with an NPC. No way. You mean you actually inhabit their body and see the world through their eyes. Exactly. It completely changes how you think about the game. Especially with the AI controlling those characters. Mm. Imagine the possibilities. It's wild, right? <laughs> but that brings us to how the NPCs were designed because each one is procedurally generated. Different clothes, different body parts, different hairstyles. It's amazing how much personality they have. Yeah, it's like a random fashion show happening in the game. And then they all have this AI-generated dialogue just adds to the chaos. Speaking of AI-generated dialogue, this isn't like pre-programmed chatbot stuff. These NPCs actually remember what happens to them. What? So their dialogue changes based on your actions? Yeah, it can. Like if an NPC sees you disappear after using switcheroo, they might mention it later. That's insane. Or you say you give an NPC super strength and they move a giant boulder, they might be like, I am strong, like a bear. Yeah. But in a thick Russian accent. Hold on, Russian accent, what is going on with this game? Apparently the game randomly assigns a language to each NPC, which then changes their voice and the types of things they say. Wow, the developer thought of everything. Right, it's these little details that really make the game special. And you know what else is a cool detail? The fact that it has a built-in level editor. Seriously, that's next level stuff. Yeah, you can actually design levels while you're playing the game. You're kidding, so it's like <laughs> the game is both the canvas and the paintbrush. It's pretty meta when you put it like that. <laughs> but yeah, you can move platforms around, yeah. plays enemies wherever you want, even reposition the troll all in real time. That's amazing. Talk about creative freedom. Right, and it makes experimenting with different level designs so easy. Yeah. Because you see the changes instantly. I bet. Although, I'm guessing you don't have complete control over everything. Well, you're right. It's not totally limitless. Some things you still have to tweak manually. Makes sense. What kind of things? So let's say you want to get rid of something completely, like a platform or an enemy. Or maybe you want to change what kind of superpower a bonus item gives you. For those things, you have to go into the game's code which is written in JSON. Exactly. It's like a little bonus challenge for players who like to pinker. I love that. So it's a hybrid system, real-time editing for most things, 
but then the option to fine tune with code? This is a really cool approach. It makes me wonder, do you think this kind of in-game level editing could be the future of game development? It's an interesting thought. Imagine games that are constantly evolving, not just based on what the developers create, but also on contributions from the players. That would be amazing. A true blurring of the lines between creator and consumer. It's a whole new world of possibilities. But we've gotten a bit ahead of ourselves. We've talked a lot about the technical side of this game. But what I really want to highlight is how those technical aspects actually translate into a really unique and fun gameplay experience. Absolutely. It just goes to show that you don't need a huge budget to create something special. It's all about creativity and ingenuity. Mm. And this developer definitely had both. They did so much with what seems like a pretty limited set of tools. And speaking of tools, mm -hmm. this game relies heavily on procedurally generated content and not just for the levels. Right, we were talking about the procedurally generated content. Yeah. And how it's not just for the levels. Yeah, with the character appearances and all, but it's the dialogue too. And that's what I really wanted to get into because it raises a big question. Is this the future of gaming? It's definitely a possibility. I mean, think about it. Every time you play, you're gonna have a different experience because the game is creating new content on the fly. Right, the replayability is practically endless. Yeah. And for developers, think about how much time this could save. Instead of having to handcraft every single line of dialogue, every character interaction, they can create a system that does it for them. It's like giving game developers superpowers of their own. Exactly, and it opens up so many possibilities. Imagine these massive game worlds that are constantly evolving because the content is being generated in real time. It's mind blowing when you think about it, but, and this is a big but, there's always a risk when you let algorithms take the reins. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like AI might be great at generating text, but can it ever really replace human creativity? That's the question, isn't it? Can an AI ever write dialogue that's as witty, as nuanced, <laughs> as emotionally resonant as something a human could create. It's a high bar to set. And, yeah. and then there's the whole issue of things just not working right. Oh, absolutely. Like what happens when the procedural generation goes haywire? Right, imagine you're about to reach the end of the game and suddenly. Yeah. The level generator decides to spawn a giant wall right in front of you. Or you walk into a room and all the NPCs are just spouting gibberish. Talk about a game breaking bug. It's definitely a double edged sword. Mm -hmm. The technology is incredibly exciting, but it's still early days. It's going to be interesting to see where things go from here. But ultimately, it comes down to the developers. They're the ones who have to use these tools responsibly and find that balance between human creativity and the power of AI. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Finding that synergy where AI enhances human creativity, not replaces it. Like giving an artist a paintbrush that can blend colors on its own. It doesn't make them any less of an artist. It just gives them new ways to express themselves. I love that analogy. And I think that's a perfect note to, sorry. oh, sorry, were you about to say something? Sorry, <laughs> I was just gonna say that. I think that's a perfect note to wrap up on. Yeah, you're right. It's been a fascinating deep dive. We've covered so much ground from troll superpowers to the philosophical implications of AI. But I think this game really highlights something important. It shows that sometimes the most innovative ideas come from embracing randomness and procedural generation. Totally. It makes you wonder, if a game can be this creative by letting algorithms make some of the decisions, what does that say about the potential of our own human imaginations? It's a question worth pondering. And on that note, I think it's time for us to sign off. <laughs> Until next time. Happy gaming, everyone.